Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Jason. You're watching Micro Investor. Uh, so in this video, we're going to be talking about EV stocks because they're really hitting it pretty hard right now. They're they're down quite a bit. All red, all the way that I'm seeing in my EV watch list. Nothing, nothing even looks um looks green today. Um, even Tesla's down at the time of filming this. But uh, some of these ones that are SPAC stocks, like uh, Lordstown Motors, we're seeing that those ones is really taking a beating uh, so I want to just be talking about this where do I see these uh, EV stocks going because you guys know if you've been following my channel for a long time I've been covering EV stocks here since 2018 I know I know I'm not a really popular youtuber that talks about stocks but I've been around here a long time I made a few hundred videos just talking about uh, different stocks here and um, uh, really following these this EV trend and you know I'm investing into a lot of these so uh, let's just take a look at these in this video let's talk about them and um, and I'll give my predictions on what do I think that these things are going to be doing here in the future. So as we get to it, everybody, if you don't mind, please do me a huge favor and please be sure to smash destroy and not only that like button because as you know, that helps me out a lot with the YouTube algorithm and it helps spread my videos to more people that might find them interesting. Also, subscribe if you have not already. And if you want to be a Patreon and you want to help out this channel a little bit, uh, I do have one link is in the description. And thank you to all the Patreons. There's also a private Discord attached to that Patreon. Uh, I like to hear from you guys. Uh, I don't really hear from a lot of people here, and I'd like to hear from you guys. So if you do consider being a Patreon, I'd like to hear from you in the Discord. All right, now let's get to it. So these are the EV stocks here. Uh, made a watch list just sp specifically for it. Now, I know there's plenty more EV stocks out there, but I got... Pretty much the main ones that I cover all the time on here, uh, Tesla, Ride, Workhorse, Neo, Xpeng, Li Auto. Uh, just covering like the ones that actually are manufacturing vehicles. I didn't put plug or any of those guys on here. Actually, correction. I mean, ones that are having vehicles with their name on it, because not a whole lot of them are actually even manufacturing their own vehicles or even have vehicles coming out anytime soon. But uh, anyways, as you can see, it's just all red all the way down. And some of them have taken much bigger hit than others. And uh, we have... The uh, disastrous ride here, uh, Lordstown Motors, uh, this one, woo, this is taking a pretty big hit. I mean, this has been a total disaster. Total disaster. But Lordstown Motors, uh, the middle of February, the stock was upwards above $30 a share, and it has really just taken a huge uh, drop down here, and a lot of it has to do with uh, or a lot of the more recent stuff has to do with the Hindenburg, the uh, short sellers, uh, putting a pretty damaging report on about them, saying that they're not even close to be producing any vehicles anytime soon, or their truck that they had, uh, that that's not going to be coming out for another few years. And uh, they basically said that uh, they expected everybody to um, assume that they weren't going to have any vehicles anytime soon, even though a lot of people thought that there was um, reservations uh, vehicles that were going to be starting to be produced and coming out uh, so it just kind of ended up being this whole pretty much lie to some people uh, and I was actually one that was invested into this one at one time uh, I was holding quite a bit of it actually when it was still a SPAC stock uh, honestly I'm pretty glad I got out of it and um, and this is just pretty bad for for ride and this is actually bad for workhorse too because well workhorse does own a pretty good portion of Lordstown Motors, they own about 10% of it, and a Workhorse is already kind of having a hard time with everything that's been going on with the USPS contract, with them losing that. Uh, so this just puts them in an even worse situation, and we're really hoping that Workhorse would be able to get that contract to USPS, but now uh, that kind of just adds more fuel on that fire of them not being able to get that, in my personal opinion. Now we'll cover a little bit of these Chinese stocks. Uh, as you guys know, I like Neo. Neo is one of my favorite ones. Uh, Neo is, well, in my personal opinion, Neo at this price, I like it. I'd like to see Neo even come down uh, even more than this, to be honest with you. The uh, last time I actually bought Neo, uh, that I was actually really comfortable buying any shares in Neo was at, when it was at twenty dollars a share, and I even felt like that was too high. But um, but if it was to go down uh, more from where it's at right now. I'd say definitely be buying it. It was way too overvalued when it was up here. And I'm somebody that uh, that was in Neo very early. 
I um, I was buying NEO when it was below $2 a share. You guys know I was in that stock the first day that it came out on the market. Uh, there's a video on my YouTube, and I was invested in the NEO. Uh, very bullish on this one, and uh, I just I just feel like the, the valuation of this company was way too high at one point. And uh, I've been actually really, um, really excited to see that this has actually been dropping because uh, the lower prices mean better buying opportunities. And uh, this was one that really did need to have some pullback. It really did because there was a lot of pumping up this stock. And uh, so th this one, I really don't mind it dropping down because just because that opens up better buying opportunities. Because in the long run, I really think that NEO is a great one. And I think that it has a lot of opportunity to really grow in China and even expand more there in Asia, as well as um, as these other ones, Xping and Li Auto even. I really can see that there is uh, more to come. And I think maybe even my personal favorite between Xping and, and Li Auto is actually Li Auto. I think that they have a really good opportunity ahead of them. And um, this is also creating better buying opportunities in my personal opinion. Now let's take a look over at Churchill Capital. You know, they're gonna be merging with Lucid Motors. Now, a lot of people are excited about this one, but uh, this right here, this is just complete meme status right here. I say that because uh, a lot of people were talking about this on the Reddit forums and other uh, other social media forums talking about this, pumping the stock up quite a bit. Um, a lot of this has to do also with the announcement when it was confirmed that they were emerging with Lucid Motors. But uh, now when you do take the price in effect here, it makes a lot more sense than it being at $22 a share, a much better opportunity but also keep in mind that the merger isn't even done yet. I mean, they're not; they're still just still in the the um, the blank check stage, I should say. And uh, their only connection with Lucid Motors this time is that they will be merging with Mo Lucid Motors um, as long as everything goes, you know, goes well. Now, this next one, NGA. Uh, Northern Genesis Acquisition Corp. They're going to be merging with Lion Electric, which is a Canadian company, but they have their their uh, U.S. headquarters in Sacramento, California. Actually, just right by me, I uh, I made a video about this. I actually drove over there and uh, tried to uh, spot some anything I can. They were shut down uh, during that time, but um, I did see some some school buses back there, and they actually made the school buses for the uh, school that I went to in elementary school, which is. Really cool to know that they actually have been um, actually producing products there. Uh, not a lot of people really know that they do have a product that they have been uh, selling. So they made some electric school buses for the school I went to when I was a kid. Uh, but anyways, yeah, this is Line Electric. Um, th this one, it, it did go up pretty high. A lot of these SPACs, they just had this huge rush of uh, just people investing into them. Um, pretty much all of 2020, I mean, SPACs were just going insane. And uh, so was anything electric vehicle. And uh, when um, going here into 2021, NGA did go up quite a bit. And it is nice seeing that there has been some pullback. And um, I think this is more realistic in my opinion. Because when I first started talking about this one, it was uh, towards the end of December. It was around the new year. And it made it made sense to the stock price at that time. But then it just, it just went to this extreme level, just going up a lot. And now seeing it come back a bit makes a lot more sense um you guys shouldn't really be upset when you see these these blank check ones that haven't completed their mergers yet when they come down uh don't be afraid when you see that uh see that as a good thing because you're you're not invested into the actual company yet so don't, so don't be afraid if you see ccib come down or or nga or a psac which we'll be talking about now now psac they found a target very fast uh, to be merging with Faraday Futures, and they were originally going to be a real estate play. I mean, that was what they were orig originally going for. I mean, they're called Property Solutions Acquisition Corp. And they they decided to go the EV route. And I'm sure no one at the uh, no one in the management with PSAC has any sort of idea about anything with EVs. But they decided to uh, go that route with the EVs, merge with them. And we saw the stock just, you know, go up a lot. When that announcement came out and we're just seeing basically the effects of this big rise here of it coming back down to earth is uh, what's going on because it shot up to the moon pretty fast there and uh faraday futures also has its own drama within the company they have a lot of their own problems that they have to deal with and uh, so that has a little bit also to do with the stock price now for uh, this next one fisker uh this one also uh, 
finished its merger not that long ago. It used to be SPAQ uh, when it was still in the uh, blank, st blank check stage. So this was a uh, SPAC stock as well. Uh, this one did see a really good March. You know, all these uh, EV stocks, they saw pretty good February, March. A lot of people were um, were buying up these things with the uh, with what was going on with uh, GameStop and um, AMC. A lot of people were uh, doing the same thing with this one as well, really pumping up this stock. And uh, you shouldn't be surprised that you're seeing a lot of pullback come from this one. Uh, this was just one that um, basically after the whole merger happened anyways, it just went down. Now, one of the things that Fisker was pushing was they were pushing uh, solid-state batteries. That was a big factor with this one. Uh, a lot of people were interested that they were going to have solid-state batteries in the vehicles, but there has also been this uncertainty this whole time with Fisker about who is even going to be making their vehicles. And uh, it was announced back in February that they dropped the solid-state batteries and they entered a deal with Foxcom, the maker of the iPhone, and uh, they're going to be using their Wisconsin factory to possibly be producing vehicles. So there's a lot still way up in the air with Fisker, and they're still saying that they're going to have a vehicle out in the market and uh, towards the end of 2022, but uh, there's still no uh, certainty exactly who's even going to be producing their vehicle. But don't take that as an insult to the company. Um, I do like the design of their vehicle, and I do like Fis uh, Henrik Fister as a designer. I think uh, his vehicles are great. So uh, hopefully everything is great with Fisker, in my personal opinion. Now, I know I sound a little bit weird probably to some people that uh, have not seen my channel because I welcome these lower prices. But if you are an investor, you have to welcome lower prices of stocks because it creates a much better buying opportunity. And that means chances to make even more money. But you, you do not want to catch a falling knife. If you believe in the company, you believe in the price that it's at right now and you think it's a very good value, then it, it, you shouldn't be afraid to buy it. That's not financial advice, though. That's just my personal opinion. But uh, that's the way I do it. I If I see uh, uh, one of these stocks and I see it down quite a bit, and I would be more interested in buying it at a much lower price than a higher price because, well, a lot less risk involved, especially if you have a lot of faith in the company in the long run. Anyways, I'd like to hear your guys' thoughts about these uh, stocks, uh, these EV stocks that are having a lot of pullback right now. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe, everybody. I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching.